Good morning, everybody. How about we turn to the inside cover and let's do uh, the Synodal Prayer together for the Holy Spirit. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Welcome to Nativity of Our Lord Parish. Let us begin this morning by singing number 180, Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Please rise. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody on this Ascension Sunday. Of course, it's also Mother's Day weekend, so happy uh, Mother's Day to all the mothers in the many different ways that people are mothers. And of course, we have the Mother Church, too, don't we? The way in which she guides and gives birth to so many people. But God does ask us to look towards him to see the many different ways in which he comes to us and the way in which he is with us in so many different ways. So as we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You came to heal the contrite of, oh, we'll have our sprinkling right. <laughs> I saw. And all to whom this water came 
And of course, the gift of, of the sprinkling rite is it helps also to call to mind our baptism and the many graces that come to us through that gift of baptism. And of course, that also gives us plenty of reason to sing uh, joyfully, and so we'll have our Gloria. Let us pray. <laughs> Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and making us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught 
until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. 
May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens. Far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he puts all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up to heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. There's always so much that's going on in these, seems like these days of Easter. These, especially these Sundays of Easter, but especially now when we come to the ascension of the Lord, there's a lot more. It seems like there's always things that are coming in, like the Holy Father. He just, uh, I don't know if people know, he just declared another holy year for the year 2025. It begins on, on this, well, for him, for Rome, over in Rome, it'll begin on December 24th. For the other dioceses around the world, he's asking that it begins on December 29th. Of this year but he's proclaiming a year of hope a year of hope ultimately our hope is in heaven isn't it in the way in which we get there which Jesus is actually showing us today he is ascending into heaven but the Holy Father is also asking and I think it ties in with some of the different uh, things that that are happening He's asking that we look around in our world. We look around in our daily lives and we see hope. Because it's all around us. There's so much crazy stuff that's happening in the world. 
But there's so much good that is happening in the world. And he's asking us to focus on the good, to see where our hope lies. I think it's neat to sit there to think about that. One of the other things that, that this, today, this day reminds me of is back on June 5th in 2011 is the day that I was ordained, and it was the ascension of the Lord. So this day always holds kind of a special meaning for me as, as we go through the ascension to see all the different things that come to light in many different ways as you go through these readings that we have for today. But one of the other things that, that has taken place is, of course, last week we had, our, uh, we, we had a, a survey that was done. And I'm just going to briefly touch on it. We'll go into it maybe hopefully a little bit more on Pentecost. But of the 536 people that were counted last weekend, 293 people responded to the survey. Of that, where the, what the main fir first question was how many people read the, the bishop's letter? Roughly, it was about 20% of the people that answered the survey had read through the bishop's letter. But one of the other things that, that was, uh, was interesting was the way in which we looked at the different things far as our profession of faith, the creed, the, what we would like to learn more about, the profession of faith, the creed, or the uh, celebration of the Christian ministry, the sacraments and the liturgy, life in Christ or morality, or Christian prayer. The interesting thing about that is that if you look at the older generation, they all wanted to learn more about the liturgy and the sacraments. That was number one. As you get younger, and you start going younger, all of a sudden, it becomes morality. And they want to know more about morality. But it makes sense, doesn't it? If we look around in our world today, as our Holy Father is pointing out, where is the hope? Look at all the different things that are going on and taking place. The way in which people are getting wrapped up in different things. Rather than turning to God. God is always there asking us to place our trust and our hope in him. And he comes to us in many different ways. The second most popular thing and it went through all ages, was prayer. There's so many different ways to pray. And prayer is so important because that's what keeps us in contact with God, isn't it? Everything we do should ultimately lead us to prayer. We should be involved in prayer and everything that we do in our lives to see the way in which God is there sustaining us but that's part of what today's readings is also isn't it jesus ascended into heaven what does it mean for jesus to ascend into heaven did he go up in a cloud and just disappear and now he's up there and we're stuck down here and he's left us alone some people think that no, but it's not that. One of the best ways that I've heard so far, Bishop Barron has, has describes it, as we live in a three-dimensional world. We live in a three-dimensional world. God has gone to his dimension, that God dimension. Think of it like a fourth dimension. But he's omnipresent. He's at, well, present at every moment, in every place, at the same time. So God is always with us. He never leaves us. That's why he says, go out into the world. And they went out with the company of signs, with the word that was there in our gospel passage. 
is part of that great commission that the church is all called to do. To go, therefore, as it says, I like uh, uh, Matthew's version better, go, therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That gift of baptism. But it's also learning. Some of that learning needs to come about in and through prayer. How do we pray? How do we pray? It's about allowing God to come into our lives, to enrich and enlighten our hearts and our minds to who he is and the love that he has for us. There's many different ways of prayer. The Mass itself is a prayer all the way through it. It has different dimensions to the, to the for prayer in it. It has petitionary prayer where we have our intercessions, asking for prayer for our help for different people. It's very definitely a vocal prayer. As we talk through it, we sing through it. We enter into it every time with our hearts and our, and our songs and with our bodies. So we physically enter into it. That's why we rise and we kneel. We pray. But it's also very much so in which we're, we're adoring our Lord also, isn't it? Especially when it comes into the Blessed Sacrament. He is elevated. There's time for quietness. And we adore our Lord. We ask him to come into our hearts and into our lives. But that's what we're doing too also, isn't it, with this day. The promise of the Holy Spirit coming to us. Are we praying our novena to the Holy Spirit? Asking him to come to us as we make our way towards Pentecost? Because that's an important part of prayer, isn't it? Asking God to come into our lives. Jesus says he's not going to leave us alone. He's going to send us another advocate, the Holy Spirit. I couldn't help but think about that as, as I was uh, preparing for this Sunday's uh, homily. And last year, I think it was about this time, we were going through the, the Wild Goose series from on form. The Wild Goose is another name for the for the uh, Holy Spirit is Celtic. It actually comes from over in Europe. And so the, the uh, but Father Pavanka, one of the things that I remember Father Pavanka talking about is that he was trying, to, he was just getting involved in a charismatic movement and stuff with, or with some charismatic people. And he had never experienced it, experienced it before. And what he had, uh, one of the guys kept inviting him and stuff like that, and he says, no, and he finally sat down by himself. And he was quiet. And he asked the Holy Spirit to come to him. And he did. It's that heart-to-heart -heart talk, isn't it? With our God. Do we sit and have those heart-to-heart -heart talks with our God? I remember my time when I came back into the church. I was just entering back into it. After not living a very good life, <laughs> I remember sitting up at the church, up at Crescent Lake. I was redoing the confessional up there. I was learning how to pray the rosary. I even had one of those pamphlets. And I'd finish up working on the confessional. One of the things that happened is, as I was kneeling in about the third or fourth pew back on the right-hand side as you walk up into the church from the one side, and I was sitting there praying the rosary. And as I was, I was probably in the third or fourth mystery of it. And all of a sudden, it was like the pages were shaking on the little pamphlet, because I had to follow along with a pamphlet, because I didn't know the rosary. Except for I noticed something. <laughs> the pages weren't moving. It was me. God was touching me. 
it wasn't making me feel very comfortable. <laughs> I even had to say, sorry, Lord, for this distraction and the way that I'm acting. And I remember that, but I continued in with it. I wanted to leave, <laughs> but I stayed. And I'm glad I did because of the peace that came along with it. The peace. And the many other different experiences from after that. God continues to allow his graces and his experiences to come to us. Because no matter if it's the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit, it's God's Spirit working in us. God's Spirit wants to work in each and every one of us. And we're preparing for that great grace, that gift of the Holy Spirit, and the way in which he comes to us, whether it's the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit. So as we make our journey through this week, and we look for God's hope, May we all experience his presence coming into our lives. The things that he wishes to teach us. Because it's the things that have to do with this world, isn't it? How we live our lives out in this world. Better yet, how he lives his life in us, out in the world. And it's joyful. It's peaceful. Because it comes from God. So let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's love for us, let us bring before him our prayers and petitions for the church 
and the world. For all who minister in the church, may they grow in the power of the Holy Spirit in leading their hearts along with others to an abundance of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, may God guide world leaders in resolving disputes nonviolently. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have served and are serving in the armed forces, may they find your heavenly grace in keeping peace in difficult situations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of motherhood and for the many different ways women are mothers and the way they treasure and support God's plan for their life and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, may the Lord multiply their joys and ease the burdens of their sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the grace of the Eucharist lead us toward greater love for Christ and all his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may our Savior, our Blessed Mother, and all the angels and saints joyfully welcome them to the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is intended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold within the silence of our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join us in playing, praying the vocations prayer. O oh God, God, we earnestly ask you to bless, bless our, our diocese, diocese with many, many priests, priests, brothers, sisters, sisters and, deacons and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and, and gladly spend their entire lives serving, serving your, your church and, and making you known and loved. loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a couple more prayers. Let's also pray for family relationships. I was driving over for Father Mumper's funeral on Friday, and it was, came on the radio, and it just was brought to my attention, especially those relationships that are broken in so many different ways at this, uh, on this Mother's Day weekend. May, that, may they find God's healing touch in their relationships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's also pray for Lou Gehrig, who will have a uh, sweet funeral mass, will take place on Tuesday, uh, May 14th. Lou died on Sunday. And then also Esther uh, Fisher, uh, whose funeral mass will take place on Friday, on May 17th. For them and for their family members, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God. We ask that you graciously hear these prayers and answer them according to your divine will. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we present our gifts to the Lord, let us sing together to live with him forever, found at number 518, 518. <laughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to heavenly realms. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of the glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowliest lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. Amen. 
and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory, our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with his eyes raised to heaven, he, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith in rest and sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Number 581. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please remain seated for the prayer after communion. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Just a few announcements. 
Uh, adoration is going to take place on May 5th, this Wednesday on May 15th from 10 to 3 p.m. Notice what happens in, the, in adoration. In different parts of the world, there's actually quite a few of them now, and there's even some modern ones, where the, the host itself has bled. The same Jesus that we, that we receive, what they've discovered is, is cardiac tissue. But not only that, they, have the, they can identify the, what blood type it is, and it's the same blood type. It also shows that it's a heart, it's a heart that's under stress by the white blood cells that are there. I believe it's the white blood cells, something with the white blood cells. And they can tell that it's a heart that's under stress. In other words, what we enter back into in the mystery of the liturgy in the Eucharist. We enter back, God collapses time. We enter back that one time with the crucifixion, his death, resurrection. His life, death, and resurrection, I should say. The things that God gives us. But he wants nothing more than for us to come in and to talk to him heart to heart. Uh, the 4.30 Mass next Saturday is going to be uh, the Vigil Mass for Pentecost. This Mass will include a couple of extra readings and psalms, and so it will be just a little bit longer. A Catholic Schools Week collection. People wanted to know about Catholic Schools Week collection that we had a couple months back. We had collected here at Nativity, we had collected $1,275 was collected for our parish, at our parish. But we received back from the diocese $5,337. That's from all the other parishes that don't have schools and stuff in the way in which they're showing support for the Catholic schools. Roses are available at the entrances of the church for Mother's Day. Uh, the annual, oh gosh, this is a long word. The annual diocesan wedding anniversary mass celebration. <laughs> I don't know why it's gotta be that long, but I guess it does. Will take place on July 13th at the Cathedral in Superior. Please see the bulletin for details. If you're celebrating a, one of the uh, special anniversary, please consider going up there. There are still several CDs that are available for uh, from uh, Mary Dahl and Tracy Hertz, Hartzheim, uh, who had made those videos. Uh, they go the proceeds go to Nativity School, and they'll make a great Mother's Day gift. We could have all the mothers please stand. We're mothers in any way. Please rise. Let's raise our hands towards them and give them a blessing. Heavenly Father, as a mother gives life and now nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. We ask you to send your spirit down upon these women who bear fruit in so many ways. Bless them in their motherhood. Give them patience and compassion. Console them in their grief and strengthen them in their difficulty. May they be an image of your love to the world as they seek to follow you in all things. And may Mary, the mother of God and our mother, enfold in them her love now and always. Amen. And please rise for a blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend where he is. Amen. May he grant that, as Christ, after his resurrection, was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty know with joy the fulfillment of his promise and stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And have a great Mother's Day weekend, everybody. And as we go forth, let us sing together number 172, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Jesus Christ is risen today.
And script is available. Thank you. <laughs> 